These are the Iron Lands. They are a harsh land we endure, defined by iron. Folks of iron will, vows stronger than any steel, iron are the ruins that dot this land. These lands are unforgiving, with winter always singing her threats across the wind. We came here as refugees, fleeing the world we ravaged, the plagues, the slavers, and found ourselves in a place unlike what we had known. Winter dances near triumphant year-round. Day and night march on for weeks on end. We know we are the first humans to set foot here. Here, we live in the ruins of an empire we do not understand. We survive amongst a warp and brutal folk we call the Broken. We don't know what our future has in store for us, but we've carved a place out in the strange new world. Ironsworn is a PBTA game, meaning it's powered by the apocalypse. To those not in the know, that means it's a hack of the 2010 indie role-playing game Apocalypse World by the kind and lovely people at Lumpley Games. This humble game from 2010, about playing people in a gonzo, gas-chugging post-apocalypse, took tabletop RPGs by storm. PBTA has diversified into anything and everything. PBTA fills so many niches, from games about being flying aces in a Ghibli-inspired post-World War I fantasy world, to playing hormonal teenagers who want to fuck each other and are also monsters. PBTA is now a bedroom endeavor to the starry-eyed undergrad and a corporate decision made by IP holders to see how best to adapt their product into the RPG sphere. I've had a lot of fun with PBTA games for many years and enjoyed them, but have, as of the past two years or so, become disillusioned with them. Very few of them ever match up to the original Apocalypse world. Instead of creating a game based entirely around the narrative beats and having rules to respond to them, much of what PBTA has become has been bending the narrative around the whims of the rules. Instead of creating games made to help support play within a specific genre, they have become games of enforcing genre tropes. In the worst cases, an opportunity for the most egotistical of writers to flex their muscles and show how good they are at writing very basic metaphors. And it is in this light that I see Sean Tompkins' 2018 RPG, Ironsworn. A game in a field started by a great game that has rarely ever approached the original promise. It's a game in dialogue not only with the original Apocalypse world, but also the entire field of PBTA as a whole. It is a bold game, eschewing many of the traditions of what it means to be PBTA, while also feeling in some ways like a return to form. And it fundamentally feels like Ironsworn. Ironsworn is a game about being a settler in a new land known as the Ironlands. Your people came here as refugees seeking out a better life as terrors consumed the old world. Your people swear iron vows, unbreakable promises that you must keep or truly suffer. Your player characters made one of those vows and must fulfill their duty. Within that general conceit, it's incredibly open-ended. Much like any PBTA game, you make a role whenever your character does something the game deems to be an interesting possibility of failure. From that role, you can either have a failure, a partial success, or a full success. This is called making a move, and depending on what exact move you make, certain things happen. What sets Ironsworn apart from most PBTA games is the momentum mechanic. Momentum is a sliding scale representing how well things have been going, a sort of mechanical memory of past roles. Good roles can give you momentum, while bad ones can take it away. Momentum can even be spent to make bad roles less bad. It's a very elegant way of modeling being on a roll. Lastly, Ironsworn is all about filling out clocks. Everything from your grand epic Iron Vow to fighting an enemy is filling out a clock. A clock, for the uninitiated, is a tool for measuring how complete a task is. There's a set number of checkboxes to fill out until the task is done. You mark one of the boxes every time a success happens. While clocks are not unique to Ironsworn, they are more focused upon here than any other PBTA game. Except for maybe Blades in the Dark. So that's the basics of it. What truly makes this a great PBTA game is the approach it has to playbooks. That, of course, being that there are no playbooks. While the original Apocalypse world has playbooks that are generic and open to almost any emotional arc, 
as PBGA design cemented, a large amount of games ended up making playbooks focused on not what the character was, but the role the character should play in the story. The specificity led to, in a lot of cases, a stifling of creativity and flexibility as all that defined a character is how well they fit into an archetype. This sort of thing ended up creating characters designed to fit a specific mold where the details are not that important. Like a character being renamed, their details changed, like when fan fiction gets edited to be published and sold in stores. Ironsworn, however, has no playbooks. Instead, it has assets that you use to create a character. What ends up happening is essentially a switch from a class-based system to a feat-based system. This allows the character creation to have meaningful uh, interface with the mechanics, but still keeps the ability for someone to create a new type of character, unlike what the author originally deemed to be important of pre-making. Ironically enough, this break from tradition is what makes Ironsworn feel like a return to form for PBTA. Your characters do predefine things and have predefined skills, but there isn't a hyper cementation of what narrative role a character is. You don't go into a playbook and see, yes, this is what I want to play if I want to play a character who must balance their inner truth with societal expectations. You are free to create the central drama of your character as you see fit, with the role they take in the world being just as important as their drama. In line with breaking from tradition, Ironsworn eschews what's maybe the most defining feature of PVT in a lot of people's minds. Rolling and summing 2d6 plus modifiers. For everything. Checking against a fixed difficulty, of course. Instead, all checks are made by rolling 1d6 plus your modifiers, then rolling two different d10s, trying to roll under the value of the modified d6, where one of the results of the d10 being under is a partial success, while both of them is a full success. This is just sort of worse. Like, sure, it does technically add some more things where it can interact with momentum, uh, but also that's not really that interesting. It's way clunkier than the 2d6 in a specific range that was the original Apocalypse World for no real benefit. I think I know why it's done, but I, I don't think it's a very good reason. While Ironsworn has a few differences in the game rang, I think count as mechanical innovations in the field of PBTA. Anyone familiar with the game knows that I've been avoiding talking about what maybe is the biggest draw of Ironsworn, the play aids. Ironsworn is a master class in the anti-canonical. While some games may spend hundreds of pages on setting, and while it can be a lovely thing, uh, the anti-canonical urges people at the table, the people who are most important for playing a game, to make the world to their taste. Obviously, it's not the first or only game to make this explicit. Many games that I really enjoy have done something like this to that effect, such as Troika or Flying Circus. However, what makes Ironsworn an interesting case of this is the World Booklet, a collection of multiple choice answers to various aspects of what the world is with a free space to define yourself. It's a well-done middle ground to both entrusting the reader to be fully capable of beautiful artistic thinking and providing support for the people who may not be totally sure of their ability to do so yet. While an encouragement to just make what you want is always good in my books, it's often left as sort of a draw the rest of the owl situation. What we have here are essentially safety wheels of creativity, but they don't ever come across as paternalistic or like it's talking down to you. It's a very simple, hey, here's some of the ways you could change up the world and have fun with it. It's a high watermark of teaching device for this sort of thing. It's very commendable. Another very interesting fact about Iron Sworn is that it does not assume multiple people play the game. While solo RPGs are decidedly not my thing, Ironsworn is dedicated to providing support for solo play, and it leads to some really interesting things. Most PBTA games are almost entirely bereft of random rollable tables, but Ironsworn has many tables to help generate things or tell the roller what sort of thing is happening. Because of this, it ends up being of greater use to anyone running the game in any way. These tables obviously do not do all the work of creating a campaign world for someone, but this sort of thing is an invaluable gift for anyone doing so, regardless of if the setting is made during play or during prep. And it's something that so many other PBTA games just don't do for some reason, and it's a shame. The random tables are also why I assume Ironsworn uses the weird resolution mechanic. These tables are deep percentile tables, so it would be useful if the game used two 10-sided dice needed for that type of table, but the thing is, it could have just been like, to play this game, you need 2d6 and a d percentile. That isn't really a higher barrier to entry than 1d6 and 2d10. Overall, Ironsworn is what PBTA can be. It's one of the great few PBTA games I think is on the same level of the original Apocalypse World. 
It is a shining example that PBTA need not be a stagnant design philosophy. A PBTA game can be wide and expansive and feel alive and different from any other PBTA game about playing the offer's preferred tropes. When orthodoxies are in place, it is the sensible thing to interrogate them. Not all traditions are bad, but you aren't going to know what's worth keeping if you don't look them over. It's games like this that give me hope for what can be, despite my general disillusionment with Apocalypse World hacks. That's not even my favorite PBTA game. Goodbye, and be excellent.